In this video, we're going to just do some basic integration examples, and we're going to use the basic integration formulas that you can find on another video. Should be a link close by to where you got this one. And we're going to do just three of them here to get started. So our first example, and again, the notation, the little, looks like an elongated S. That basically means just find a general antiderivative of whatever's to the right. Just think about the dx as being some symbol that is in all the integral problems as well. For now, I would say just don't really assign it any meaning. Just think it's part of the notation that says, hey, find an antiderivative of what's inside there. And there's another little rule of, as well that says, just like when you take derivatives and there's a plus or minus in between, you can do it a piece at a time. Well, the same thing here. I can find an antiderivative a piece at a time. So the antiderivative of x to the fourth, you add one to the power, divide by the new power. And the antiderivative of a constant is just going to be that constant times the variable, in this case x. And then again, the most general antiderivative, we tag on a plus c. And as a check, you can take the derivative of the right-hand side, and you should get what's right back in here. And notice in this case you will. The 5 would come out front when you take the derivative, cancel out with this 5, get x to the fourth. Pi x would just become pi, and the constant would just become a 0. The next example, you have to be a little careful. You don't want to just increase the power by 1 and divide by the new number you basically are going to have to FOIL this one out first. So x squared plus 1 times x squared plus 1. Well, x squared times x squared, you'll get an x to the fourth. You'll get a plus x squared, a plus x squared, or plus 2x squared. And then you'll get a plus 1 times a plus 1. That'll give you a plus 1. And when we integrate this thing, we will get, again, x to the fourth will become x to the fifth over 5. Just like when you take derivatives, the constant comes along for the ride. We'll get 2x to the third over 3. The antiderivative of 1 will be plus x. And then again, we just tack on our plus c. So I think I'm running out of room over here to the right, but hopefully you can see it all here. So the antiderivative will be x to the fifth divided by 5 plus 2 thirds x cubed plus x to the first plus c. This next example, again, looks kind of complicated. Okay, it definitely doesn't look like a basic one. But in general, when you're doing integration, if it's not just a basic formula like the first example, the thing I always ask myself next is, is there any algebra I can do? Okay, well, I did some algebra in this case. I multiplied it out, and it turned it back into just some basic cases. Also, if there's trig involved, sometimes I'll think, is there a little trig identity I can use? So sine of x divided by 1 minus sine squared x. Recall the trig identity that says cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x equals 1. Well, if I subtract sine squared from both sides, I'll get 1 minus sine squared x equals cosine squared x. And that's what I'm going to plug into the bottom. So I've got sine of x. And I'm even going to bust this up. So I've got cosine squared. I'm going to write it as cosine of x times 1 over cosine of x. And in this case, sine over cosine is tangent of x. 1 over cosine is secant of x. And now I think, is there a function whose derivative is secant x tangent x, or tangent x secant x? And yes, there definitely is. So the antiderivative of tangent x secant x is just going to be plain old secant of x plus c. And again, if you check, the derivative of secant is secant x tangent x, so this is a correct formula. So some basic examples here. Um, but again, finding antiderivatives is, uh, in general, a much more tedious process than finding derivatives. Derivatives, you know, hey, I either have to use the quotient rule, the product rule, or the chain rule. Finding antiderivatives can become much more complicated because if the problem is just changed around just a little bit, the way that you go about doing it can change quite a bit as well. And definitely we're going to talk about the other techniques of integration in 
the other videos, so definitely take a look at those. Um, I wish there was a quick, easy fix for these, but definitely integration is one of those things where just practice makes perfect, and you got to do a lot of them. So I hope these do make things a little clearer for you.